All right, so today we're going to be doing dynamic imports in Next.js and I'm going to explain to you when you should use dynamic imports and how you should use dynamic imports. Dynamic imports are very important if you want to create a performant application and it's often overlooked and not appreciated enough even though it creates extremely fast apps. Now, we can start. You just need a Next.js application. You can create a new one and follow along, or you can just use this in an existing project. Now, let me just pull this window over, and we have this Hello World app. It's completely simple, just one H1 tag and the main tag. Now, if we go over to the network and reload, we can see that this index.js is this JavaScript file that's being pulled is 4.6 kilobytes transferred over the network, right? So this 4.6 kilobytes is our index page, the page we're on at. And to render this, we need to pull 4.6 kilobytes, right? Which is not enough. Now, let's say that we have this heavy component that I've made. It's just a heavy component that has styles. And these styles are just styles that I copied from a random page online. Okay, so there's lots of styles here. So imagine that you have this component that's full of JavaScript, like 350 lines of JavaScript with random hooks used, everything else in between, and this huge CSS module, right? So this component is heavy, and we don't just want to use this component and fetch it whenever we can, because this is going to be a strain on our network, right? Because we're going to pull lots of data. Now, what we want to do here is we want to show this heavy component only when the button is pressed. So let's implement that. That's the first step to, to show off the real power of dynamic imports. So let's just create a get a use state hook, create states. So we're going to say const should show and set should show. And it's going to be false at the beginning. So we're going to say boolean, uh, not like that, boolean, OK, false. And we're going to have a button here. We're going to say click me. And we're going to give it an event that says set should show to true. To true. OK. Now, we want when this sh should show is true, we want to show the heavy component, right? So we're going to say if should show and, so this basically means if this is true, then you're going to render, you're going to return what's after the and operator. So we're going to return heavy component, okay? Now, it should work, so let's try it out. Now we can go to our page back, okay? And let's go to the network tab. So this click me is working, right? This is the heavy component that's loaded and I'm using lots of CSS here. Okay, that's what it says. Now, when we reload the page, we see that this index.js, the same one from before, is now pulling 45.3 kilobytes. Now that makes sense, right? Because we imported that component and we're using it. But at the same time, it doesn't make sense because when we reload the page, we still aren't using that component. The component is not being shown. And who tells us that the user will, will click on the button and show the component, right? So this component is potentially being uh, pulled and not used, which means that here in our index.js, there's about 40 kilobytes of wasted JavaScript. Now, we want to only pull this component, the circle that's spinning with the text, when and only when the user clicks the button so that there is no extra JavaScript that's being fetched, right? That's the important thing. So we want to use the next dynamic for this one. So we can import dynamic from next dynamic. Let's say const dynamic heavy component. And we're going to say dynamic. We're going to give it a function that's going to import it. So we're going to go to components, go to heavy. And we're going to say SSR is equal to false because we want this to be fetched on client side. And we want to say loading, and let's give it a function. And let's return, for example, a p tag, and let's just say I'm fetching. I 
um, fetching. Okay, now this is the dynamic heavy component, right? We want to use it instead of the heavy component we imported at the top. So we can remove this component and use this one here. Okay, and now when we go back to our browser, we reload the page, you can see that the index.js is not the four, is not the 55 or 45 kilobytes that it was, it's now 19. It's way less than it should be, and it makes sense. Now watch when I click, so 19 kilobytes, watch when I click this button, click it, now you see the component heavy is being pulled. It's the, the entire 43 kilobytes of the component is only now being pulled, so not at the beginning. So we can reload the page. Again, index.js, this is the first 5 kilobytes plus 15, I guess, for the dynamic component. The entire, it's 19 because this is being imported. But now, the, the, the entire component, this heavy component that we built out, that's pulling lots of CSS and JavaScript, is not being pulled. So, it will only be pulled when I click the button. And there it is. There's, there it is, the component heavy.tsx. And right now, we actually have a performant app that's not wasting any JavaScript. So we're, we are 100% using the JavaScript. So you know when you use the Lighthouse feature here, and it says there's unused CSS, unused JavaScript, unused stuff like that. That's why. Because you're pulling JavaScript that's not being used. Because... Let's say we have five buttons here. Each of them that are showing something else. So let's say click me two, click me three, four, five, six, seven. I know there's a shortcut for this. They, they can all show a different heavy component, right? The user maybe will click one button, maybe two, maybe five, maybe none, right? So imagine if there are five components like this. And there are they are all 50 kilobytes. That means that there's 250 kilobytes. That means 250 kilobytes of wasted, wasted internet. Basically, you're wasting internet and you're slowing down the page. So this is when you want to use the dynamic import from Next.js when you're loading something heavy and that you're not sure you're gonna need it. This is a basic example. You can read up on the Next.js site of um, more advanced uses for example as you can see there is an example where there the fuse js so the js file is being imported only when it's needed so for example it should be only imported when i click and search on something there's no need for that javascript to come on my browser if i'm not going to use it the same as for clicking buttons and this example that i showed you right here so let's reload again index.js is 19 kilobytes it's only loading the component heavy js when we need it and this is how you make performant stable and very good apps that will load extremely fast for the users and they'll be extremely satisfied now you know how to use dynamic imports